Hello, uh, I'm Tim Daw, and today in this whiteboard seminar I want to talk to you a little bit about ecosystem services and well-being, human well-being. Now the interesting insight from the concept of ecosystem services is that our well-being, you could consider it almost our happiness, how good a life we have, is actually at some level derived from ecosystems and the services they provide. So ecosystem services are really important ultimately for human well-being and this was the insight which was very strongly made in the Millennium Ecosystem Assessment. But what I want to talk to you about today is to try and unpack this a little bit more. Obviously at a global scale we can understand that people of the world need food and that comes from ecosystems. But of course different people in the world don't all experience the same level of well-being and if we're interested in ecosystem services in the context of a poor country where poverty alleviation is really important, we need to understand more what the link is between ecosystem services and well-being. Now, people who've been studying ecosystems and trying to understand ecosystem services have noticed that depending on how an ecosystem is managed, we get different bundles of ecosystem services coming out of it. So, for example, in a coastal wetland, you might manage it in one way to maximise shrimp production from shrimp farms, or another way to maximise wild fishery. So we have different ecosystem services, and there may be a trade-off between them, which of course will benefit different users. So if this ecosystem service goes up, at the expense of this ecosystem service, we can see how the well-being of these two stakeholders are traded off. And this is quite obvious, but what I want to dig in a little bit more to see how even when you're just talking about one ecosystem service, it's important to understand what the well-being implications are. So if we imagine a single ecosystem service that is utilized by two different stakeholders, we can see immediately that it's not just the total aggregate amount of an ecosystem service, say the amount of fish that's been caught in an ecosystem that is important, but it is also about how individuals are able to access and benefit from that service. So if there is some kind of access mechanism, for example, this person has a fishing permit, this person does not have a fishing permit, this person is going to lose out from the benefits of this ecosystem service, and it doesn't matter how much fish is produced by this ecosystem, this person's well-being is not going to be improved. So access is a key aspect of how ecosystem services contribute to human well-being. Another key aspect is about the context of the individuals. We don't all need the same things. Some people have nowhere to live. Some people have nothing to eat. Some people have a lot of things to eat, but they live in an environment that makes them unhappy. So the ability of an ecosystem service to contribute to our well-being depends on our, we could call it, well-being context. So let's imagine the value of a fish that comes out of this ecosystem service. Let's say that this fish is worth one dollar. And we can imagine that here we have a very rich person who has lots of money and plenty to eat, and a very poor person who only has very little. You can imagine that that ecosystem service, the same value, the same quantity of fish, worth the same amount has a very different implication on well-being, the overall well-being of this group, depending if it goes to someone who's very rich and doesn't really make much difference to their wealth, or someone who has no other livelihood opportunities. So we need to be thinking not just about the amount of an ecosystem service that's created, but also about who benefits and what contribution it makes to their livelihoods. And I'll give you one quick example to illustrate this. In Tanzania, uh, there were women who used to fish for octopus traditionally. So they went out onto the reef flats and harvested octopus. When a market for that octopus developed, the women were able to get a lot more money for every octopus that they caught. So the total value of that ecosystem service increased. However, this didn't ultimately lead to an improvement in the well-being of those women. Because the social system changed, the access regime changed. And because it then became a profitable industry, it became normal for young men to also take part in that activity. And they were attracted by the money that was generated, and the women were ultimately displaced from that 
um, fishery, which then experienced much higher levels of exploitation. So if you were to value that ecosystem service by the total value of octopus which came out of the reef, definitely that ecosystem service value increased. And some people's well-being were really increased. Those young men who moved into the fishery were able to earn a lot of money, which they could spend to improve their well-being by paying for their children's school fees or so that they could eat well. However, another user, the women, certainly lost out as a result of this development. So we can see that in order to understand the implications of a change in an ecosystem service for different people's well-being, we need to understand access and we need to understand the well-being context of each of the users who are using it.